So good morning, and thank you very much for uh, coming today to and raise awareness for a bill that we've been working on in the House, which is HB 5707, that would allow uh, beagles, uh, specifically who are used in research facilities in our state universities, have the opportunity to be adopted. Right now, currently, um, animals that are used in research facilities are simply euthanized. And what the Beagle Freedom Project has done is highlight that they would like to take these animals and offer them a second chance. And, and when I first got uh, contacted by the Beagle Freedom Project, I kept referring to this bill now, this session, as the second chance bill. So they're just, all we're simply asking for is a second chance, and today's the public hearing in the Environment Committee, and I'm really excited. We have three beagles here. We have Ben, Libby, and Maggie, who are all research beagles, and um, have been given a second chance. Um, we, we, we have a bipartisan animal welfare caucus, and we work on a lot of animal welfare bills, and it's particularly fun for me because I do have two rescue beagles, so I am a little prejudiced when it comes to beagles. Um, I'd like to introduce Kevin Chase uh, from the Beagle. Be Freedom Project. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you to our coalition of representatives and the speaker for introducing this bill. Uh, Beagle Freedom Project's been around for about four years, and we've rescued 400 animals from research labs in 35 states and four countries. And in doing this work, we discovered a major deficiency of law that Animals and laboratories have all these protections pertaining to cage size, food and water access, pain management, enrichment, even ventilation. But all these protections end when the research ends. And whether a dog like Maggie or Ben or Libby lives or dies is completely discretionary and often dependent on a low-level animal care technician pleading with her higher-ups to let her have an opportunity to find a home for this dog with her friends and her family. And our position is this, after all these animals endure for our products, our drugs, our academic curiosities, they deserve a soft spot on the couch and a life after the laboratory. The Beagle Freedom Bill, HB 5707, is simple, it is non-controversial, and it is needed. And when it passes here in Connecticut, it's going to demonstrate that Connecticut continues to be a leader in animal welfare ethics, and we're proud to support them. Uh, oh, go ahead. Do you want to we're not Yeah, to I'd please. love to have you have an opportunity to hear from some of our adopters. Yeah. We have Libby and Michelle, and she can tell you, as well as Jen with Ben and Maggie, what their experience has been like um, taking a dog fresh from a laboratory where they don't know how to walk on a leash or go up and down steps, and how they acclimate and enjoy life. Just because they're purpose-bred for research doesn't mean they're any different than the dogs and cats we all share our homes with. Oh, thank you, Kevin. Hi, I'm Michelle Vieira. I adopted Libby in July. She was freed in June. And I have a one-year-old and a four-year-old, and they're fantastic with her. She's great with them. She adjusted really quickly to life in a home. And I think every other dog and cat in research facilities deserve that chance to get adopted and, and be loved and soft spot on the couch. Like Kevin said, that's what I always tell people. Um, so thank you so much for coming. Thank you for bringing me. <laughs> Would you like to come up? Sure. Ben's like, <laughs> Ben's not moving. <laughs> My name is Jen Paquette and I adopted Ben and Maggie in 2013. And I'm, there's not a whole lot I can add. You know, these guys, these guys just deserve to live the lives that they're living. They've brought so much joy to my life and the thought that they could have been put down rather than had a chance to run around in the yard, spend time in the sun, get to sleep in the bed, take up more space in the bed than I do sometimes. Just It just seems like the right thing to do. There's really no good argument for why these guys shouldn't be allowed to live, live full lives after they've been used in animal testing. And um, Melissa from the Connecticut Beagle, would you like to come up and say a few words? I adopted a beagle. Um, he was sitting on my lap one morning and I was loving on him and the Today Show came on. And there was a story about this wonderful organization who had saved 40 beagles from being euthanized. And I almost fell off the couch. Uh, are you kidding me? We actually 
do testing on beagles in this country. Uh, and that started my cause. And for the last couple of years, I've been writing letters to everybody that would listen uh, in the hopes of getting this legislation passed here in Connecticut. Thank you all for coming. And I just, I want to just say uh, briefly that as legislators, we care very deeply, um, those of us who, who push for animal welfare um, bills. It's something that's inside of us. We just, we have to do it. We feel compelled to do it. But obviously, we couldn't do it without people who are starting organizations like the Beagle Freedom Project. We couldn't do it without people who step up to the plate to adopt these animals, to um, step up to the plate like Melissa, who, who uh, raise awareness to the public. We couldn't do it without all, everyone else and all of these pieces coming together. So really, I'm very grateful for the work that Kevin and the Beagle Freedom Project Freedom Project is doing, and for you, for you, for adopting um, the animals, because obviously we wouldn't be able to do this if you weren't, if you didn't have enough room in your heart uh, to to bring them home and give them a second chance. So thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? No. All right. Let's get this bill passed. <laughs>